One of the biggest limitations with most AI chatbots is that you can't talk directly with data and get accurate answers back. A really powerful use case for chatbots has been building internal systems for businesses to communicate with policies and internal documents. However, not being able to communicate directly with data has been quite a limiting factor. Some examples of these internal documents could include annual financial reports, sales data, store inventory, customer data, etc. We can even use this to provide e-commerce product recommendations as well for a customer facing chatbot. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to chat directly with a CSV file and not only get information from a file, but automatically analyze that data accurately and get detailed insights back. For example, we could ask for the total amount of sales for that month. We could ask how many units were sold the previous month compared to the current month. We could ask how many users had signed up to our newsletter and then see the percentage change from the previous five years as well. There are a lot of possibilities depending on the data set that the business has access to. I'm also gonna show you how you can actually generate a data set that's fake using ChatGPT. So to do this, I'm gonna be using a tool called VectorShift and I'm gonna connect it to VoiceFlow. So VectorShift is an AI automations tool that enables you to build advanced knowledge-based systems that I'm gonna go ahead and connect to VoiceFlow, which is an advanced AI chatbot builder platform. So this right here is VectorShift. So VectorShift is a no-code AI automations platform. And if you've used Stack AI or Flowwise, or you've seen them before, essentially these are just more advanced knowledge-based builders. So if you are familiar with VoiceFlow, VoiceFlow is a chatbot builder where pretty much the knowledge base within VoiceFlow is simply uploading some files and talking with those files. But then people have been using Flowwise and Stack AI to get a lot more depth into how we actually retrieve information from those files. So just by scrolling down a little bit on their website, you can see here that they've got an input where you have a file, a file loader, a vector database loader. So if you know anything about the knowledge base stuff, this is a platform that will give us the depth in regards to how we retrieve information from the knowledge base. Once again, this is a no code tool. So it is quite easy to get an understanding of how it works and you can get set up quite easily. Scrolling down a bit more, we do have a lot of integrations and automations built into VectorShift as well. So comparing this to something like VoiceFlow, they don't have any sort of live integrations for Google Drive, Airtable, Notion. Essentially the data is gonna be sent directly from your account, directly into VectorShift to be queried and then retrieving data from these platforms. So jumping into VectorShift here, I've already got a couple of automations set up that I'm gonna show you how these work. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect these to a VoiceFlow project. So if you aren't familiar with how VoiceFlow works, VoiceFlow is a chatbot builder platform and pretty much the voice flow knowledge base that's built out at the moment is essentially just uploading some files, adding some data sources, maybe from a website or a PDF file, and then querying that using AI, and then just asking some basic questions. But what VectorShift allows us to do is to build a much more advanced knowledge base that we're actually going to be able to now talk to a CSV file of data. So typically if you went ahead and uploaded a CSV file or a text file with some data, and then you wanted that uploaded to the voice flow knowledge base, and you asked a question to get some information related to that data, the answers would not be as accurate as you'd want them to be. And the way that that knowledge base works on voice flow is not gonna be as advanced and as purpose-built compared to something like a vector shift. So this right here is a setup that I have on vector shift that allows us to send a question to essentially a CSV file, and then it's gonna query that CSV file and find the most relevant answers from the data within that file. It's then gonna send that data back out and we're going to retrieve that information. So what I went ahead and did is created a fake sales data sheet, which you can see here. And I actually used ChatGPT to generate all of this data. So if you actually have access to ChatGPT4, you can actually go ahead and ask ChatGPT to generate a fake CSV file of data. So if I just said generate some fake sales data and put this in a CSV file, what's actually happening here is that ChatGPT is generating some code uh, using Python code. It's then going to run this code to generate that random file. It's then going to send us this file for us to download and then we can take this and put it into VectorShift just for testing. But obviously if you are a business and you've already got a set of data you wanna use, you can just go ahead and use that data instead. So just go ahead and download your fake sales data and then I'll show you how to put that in VectorShift in a minute. So this is my sales data. Essentially it's just got a date when products were purchased. It's got a fake generated product name, quantity sold for that item and then a sales amount as well. So just to test if this actually works, I'm gonna click on start and we're gonna see if we can actually query that data. So I'm just gonna say, what was the total sales data in 2023? compared to 2024. So what we should get is the sales data for 2023 and the sales data of 2024. And it's gonna give us a little bit of a comparison uh, between the two years. So here's the response that it outputted. The total sales data for 2023 is 7.3 million compared to 2.4 million in 2024. So if I now go back to Google Sheets and test if that was actually accurate, I can go ahead and just sort this. So I've gone ahead and just sorted this. And if I just go drag down all the way to the end of 2023, and I've just hit the sum button and it says there's 7.379. Go back to vector or voice flow, we can see 
so that was accurate and I can go ahead and just get the 2024 data as well and see if that was accurate you can see there 2.44 go back to voice flow 2.44 so it was able to accurately analyze the data from not only looking at the total sales data but then getting the right data so knowing that it's 2023 and knowing that this is 2024 it was able to pick up on both of those things and then send us the accurate answer back into voice flow if you are a business owner and you're looking to integrate ai into your business you can go ahead and book a call with my agency using the calendar link in the description We've helped several businesses integrate the solutions that you've seen on this channel and we can go ahead and build the exact same for you. So to build this, go ahead and sign up for VectorShift and create a new pipeline. And essentially you're going to land on a canvas like platform like this. And so to build this, we only need four blocks. One is an input block where we're accepting the information from the user. So just type in question and it's a type text. Then from here, we're connecting this to a CSV query loader. So just go to data loaders, go ahead and drag in the CSV ones. You can drag and drop and just drag that in here. And then what you want to do is just type bracket question bracket and that's just because we want to get the input as the question that we're actually sending to the csv file then what we want to do is add in this file loader so on the same part here just click on file drag it in and then all we need to do is click on the upload file button that they've given us and then simply click on upload file and then you can go ahead and upload the fake data set or a real data set of csv data it doesn't matter it's going to figure out how to actually communicate with and retrieve the specific data all by itself so you don't need to do any further configuration so once you've got these three blocks set up we're just going to output that information the field name output one type text just like that all these can be dragged so you want to drag from this block to the next block and make sure it's set up in this configuration once you've got that going it is now done so just go to the top right up here and click deploy changes and then click on the button to the right and just click on chatbot once you're on this page just give it a random name so we might want to say sales bot then just click the big purple save button then over to the left, click on export, and then we're just gonna go and click on the API button. Once you're on this API screen here, this is the request that we're gonna be making on VoiceFlow, which is this block here. And we're just gonna be talking with VectorShift and pulling back that data. So the first block we need to drag in is just a text block at the top here. And this is just what we're gonna be asking the user. So what would you like to find? And then we wanna capture the response from the user. So just go to the capture block and drag that under. And then we need to make the API call to VectorShift to so just drag in this API block from this dev section and drag and drop right next to it. Then we're gonna use this little dot here to drag from the capture directly to the API block. So we're capturing their response and then sending that data over to our now API block. Go ahead and click on the API request. And we're just gonna be changing this from a get request to a post request because we're gonna be sending our question we're going to be posting it off to VectorShift and we're going to be getting some data back. Once that is set up, go back to VectorShift and just copy this big URL here and then go ahead and just paste that right here in the request URL box. And then we need to create one header. So it says header here. So just copy API key, go back here and click on plus on the headers and just paste that there. We'll go ahead and get the API key in just a minute. In this body section, just grab each of these values. So grabbing input, going back to VectorShift and going to the body and just pasting in input. Now input is gonna be our question that we're sending to VectorShift. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the curly bracket and type in last utterance. The reason we're using last utterance is because this is the variable that our answer was saved into in the previous capture block. And now that is being sent to VectorShift to get our answer back. Just below input, go over chatbot name, copy that and add that as a new body. I named this one salesbot, so just copy the name that you named it. Go ahead and grab your username as well. So this will be the vector shift username uh, that you signed up with. And then for conversation ID, we don't have to worry about that one just for now. To go ahead and get our API key, just click out of this API section, where it's gonna go back out of our pipeline. Go and click on your profile picture in the top right, and then just click on settings. Once you're in settings, you're gonna be in the API key section. And all you need to do is hit generate key. It's just gonna tell you to give it a name. It's gonna generate a new key. And all you need to do is copy that key when it's generated. Go back to voice flow and just paste that key right beneath the API key section. Now, lastly, just make sure that URL encoded is the section uh, here that's selected. And then we can go ahead and click send request. I've got a question here. What is the total sales amount? So this is really just testing if the system actually works and I'll just hit generate. So we can see here, it has gone ahead and worked. We've got a response back that says the total sales amount is 9.8 million. So now that we know that it works, just go down to the capture response block, click on this and type response dot output. And then we're just gonna create a new variable to save that response to. And I've already created a variable called output. What you need to do is type in the name that you want here. So I've created output two. All you need to do is hit the plus button and then generate that. But I'm just gonna use output because I've already created it. Once that's all set up, all I'm doing is using another text block and then we're gonna be displaying the answer in. So dragging both of these over to the new text block, clicking on the curly bracket and typing in output. We can now output the response from the API request now onto our voice flow chatbot. So super simple to go ahead and get that working. I'm now gonna demo an e-commerce product recommendation system 
uh, using the exact same vector shift pipeline. So all I'm gonna do is take this start block and we're just doing the exact same thing where I've connected the same vector shift pipeline and I've just swapped out the data set for a fake product data set. So you can see here, I've got uh, the name of a product, the price, I've got the rating of the product. And what I might go ahead and do is ask this data set, give me the products that are rated above four and a half. So what's happening is that it is looking at this rating column and it's saying if it is above four and a half, which would be the 4.8, 4.6, 4.9, we wanna get these three products only and then send that back to VoiceFlow. So I've just asked it, what do you have that is rated above four and a half? And we should get back those three products that is highlighted in that sheet uh, as to be higher than four and a half. So there we have it. We've got the three products, evening gown, leather jacket, and silk blouse, 4.9, 4.8, and 4.6. And so that is pretty accurate, 4.8, 4.6, and 4.9. And it was these three products uh, that it's gone ahead and pulled back. So that has accurately pulled back uh, the exact products I was looking for. So the way that this works is that it uses AI to actually generate a CSV query that it then sends to our data set and then pulls back the rows, sends that back into an AI response, and then obviously it's outputted in VoiceFlow. So in this case, VectorShift saw that we had a rating column that might have been relevant to our question we gave it. We asked it for everything above four and a half, so we just created a formula that it could use to cut out all of the products that were below four and a half, and then took those top three products that it found, and then sent that back into VectorShift. It then formatted it nicely, and then sent that into our VoiceFlow response. If you did want to get access to this vector shift pipeline, as well as this voice flow file, as well as these two fake data sets, you can go ahead and sign up to my free resource hub link in the description. If you are a business owner and you're looking to integrate AI into your business, you can go ahead and book a call with my agency using the Calendly link in the description. We've helped several businesses integrate the solutions that you've seen on this channel, and we can go ahead and build the exact same for you. If you have gotten value from this video or any of my other videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, as well as like this video.